In olden days, rocks used to walk. Is this true or false? In olden days, the rocks could walk. This is true, not false. This is an interesting excerpt cited by author Shirley Andrews from her book, Atlantis, Insights from a Lost Civilization. It is allegedly a translation of an old Chinese poem, giving an apparent exa example or explanation for the ability of the ancient builders to manipulate multi-ton stones into huge edifices without the benefit of the will or heavy modern machinery. According to other similar translations from ancient texts, manuscripts, and oral traditions from around the world, the power responsible for these walking rocks was the pulsations of energy from sound. And not just singular random sounds, but rather rhythmic sounds, that which we refer to as melody and song. In the video were huge musical instruments, the moving equipment of the ancient builders. I briefly mentioned how the notes of a melody could establish a rhythm of movement via acoustic lubrications, surface acoustic waves, and perhaps even gravity reduction. Here I attempt to demonstrate that idea with a five-tone melody. The fifth tone is what I call the motive tone as it vibrates at the resonant frequency of the vibro sled. This resonance generates powerful acoustic lubrication and surface acoustic waves which momentarily reduces friction and causes sonic propulsion. Since the resonant note is only periodic and not continuous, the movement of the sled and mass is not continuous, but instead occurs in periodic bursts. So the way I see it, this resonant tone could complement the periodic physical exertion from a person or persons. This key resonant tone vibrates at about 49 hertz, which in music is known as the musical note of G1. I was able to tune the resonant frequency of the metal cylinder to G1 by altering the weight of the sonic piston. This is the large bolt at the end. I could add nuts to the bolt to make the piston heavier, which would lower the overall resonant frequency or take them off to raise the overall resonant frequency. The preceding four tones were chosen to create a simple melody. The notes were D1 at 36.71 Hertz, E1 at 41.20 Hertz, C1 at 32.70 Hertz, and C1 again repeated at 32.70 Hertz and G1 at 49 Hertz, G1 again being the motive frequency. As we can see, without any sound, I cannot easily budge the contraption. But on each fifth note of the repeating five note melody, I can easily push the contraption. So what I've been doing is exerting on every fifth note and resting for about four notes or counts then repeat. Now perhaps you can imagine a large group of people positioned at strategic geometric points around a huge stone. Some pulling from the front, others pushing in back, and others singing and playing a melody with huge musical instruments. We might see how this rhythm with resonant notes could not only induce sympathetic vibrations in the stone or sled, sufficient enough to enhance movement, but additionally, the rhythm which could be heard and felt by all present will actively coordinate and concentrate the physical exertion of all the laborers in concert, practically ensuring that they all push or pull at exactly the same time. They would all coordinate their efforts with the sound vibrations they could both feel and hear. This seems to bring to mind other obscure oral traditions which relate that in ancient times, song, music, and rhythm made the work and load lighter. Perhaps this sentiment was not merely figurative, but also quite literal. So this experiment demonstrates a method to craft a memorable melody 
around the motive resonant frequency such that a practical rhythm could be established. Some proponents of ancient sonic technology also propose that the megalithic stones themselves were tuned, essentially cut to dimensions such that they would resonate to certain musical notes such as 432 hertz, which is a higher harmonic of one of the Schumann resonances. Any subharmonics of this note could also be used, such as 216 hertz or even 108. The idea was that resonating any object at these frequencies would be particularly strong because they would be resonating with the vibrational frequencies of the earth. Pre-tuning a stone would probably be the easiest way to resonate it. But of course, all objects have frequencies or chords anyway, which would cause them to resonate. And it would just be a matter of finding these tones by either calculation or by feel. But perhaps another question is, if sufficient energy could be developed with such relatively small objects, such as pans and cans, to move hundreds of pounds, then how much more energy could be developed by resonating a 10 ton boulder? And so for me, it seems to harken back to uh, John Keeley's and others claims that sympathetic vibrations can unlock the tremendous energy potential that's inherent in all matter. 